Hello, and thanks for listening in. My name is Donna Ayula, and I am the Vice President of Forensic Chemistry at Cayman Chemical. I am a synthetic organic chemist with several years of experience in the pharmaceutical industry as a medicinal chemist prior to joining Cayman as a research scientist in 2007. My role at Cayman as the Vice President of the Forensic Chemistry Division is now to oversee the operations of the various uh, synthesis labs and the ISO quality and production departments that prepare the standards used by the forensic community. In this brief presentation, I hope to convey the importance of the reference standard manufacturer in the discovery and confirmation of emerging novel psychoactive substances and highlight some of the ways that we strive to make your job easier. So let's quickly review from a very high level what the NPS life cycle looks like and where we fit in. So clandestine labs introduce a new designer drug or NPS substance online to appeal to recreational drug users. And when I say a new NPS, in this context today, I mean an NPS never previously encountered in forensic casework before. So something truly unknown has been introduced onto the recreational drug scene. Sometimes these new substances are introduced to circumvent regulations or to appeal to customers eager to experiment with something new. These drugs ultimately get on the forensic community's radar, perhaps uh, as a suspicious powder seized at a border crossing, and they cannot be immediately identified as a known NPS in any current database. So when this happens, the next steps in gray are where the communication loop between the forensic community and the reference material manufacturer are critical. So there's the determination of a plausible structure based on piecing together whatever evidence is available. And I have given entire one hour presentations on just that art itself. So once a plausible structure to this new unknown is proposed, confirmation of that hypothesis against an authentic reference standard that is independently synthesized by a trusted provider is needed. After confirmation is hopefully achieved, stakeholders work to issue alerts and monitor the situation for possible scheduling actions. And the questions we ask ourselves when collaborating on a, true, uh, a truly new identification case is, what exactly is this substance? Is it truly new? How do we make it? How do we name it? And then ultimately, was the hypothesis correct? Which is why this feedback loop between the forensic scientist and the reference material provider is so important. So reference standard manufacturers are really critical partners in solving these unknown cases. In thinking about putting together slides for this particular presentation, I began by listing what I believe to be some of the expectations of Cayman and other standards providers in this business. I believe that most importantly, there is the expectation that standards meet very high quality and accuracy criteria. If this expectation is not met, trust is eroded. So I take that point very seriously. Uh, then there are the expectations that we have a strong knowledge of what the current trends are. And that in turn feeds into the next bullet, which is the timely availability of new NPS standards. I also believe that the forensic community expects that we are readily available if there are questions and that we work together to solve problems and issues and make discoveries. Strong technical support is a must. Affordability is also an expectation. I know budgets are tight for many state and local labs, so affordability is important. Knowing that the forensic community has these expectations, what are some of the challenges that we face as a reference material provider? We face the challenge of the rapidly evolving NPS market that is sometimes hard to predict, and everyone wants the latest designer drug standard to close out their casework and they need it fast. Here is where that good communication and rapid communication between the forensic community and the reference material manufacturer is critical. We are constantly shifting resources to develop synthetic routes and testing methods for the newest classes of NPS, which is sometimes hard because we serve a global market that has different NPS standard needs. Some synthetic routes take weeks to months to see to a successful conclusion. And sometimes it's hard to know when and where to allocate uh, our limited resources. There are also lots of safety hazards in the lab that we work with that you may not think about, which are like, we have to work with pyrophoric reagents. We sometimes have to use carcinogenic building blocks or solvents. And then of course, with NPS, there there are no, sometimes there are no known safety data. So we are often working under a certain level of risk. Metabolite predictability and specificity is also a challenge. 
By that I mean we sometimes have to make decisions rather quickly on which metabolite standards to put research into. And often metabolites are some of the most time consuming and challenging compounds to make. Lastly, with NPS, we have the responsibility to decide on a name for that new standard, and this does require a lot of research and deliberation. There are quite a number of steps to get from the point of that recognition that there is a truly novel substance out there to the availability of, say, an ampule ISO CRM that we can ship out to a lab. I won't discuss all of these steps, but the point of showing this slide is to illustrate that it's a long process, and there are several steps in the journey that don't go according to plan. Sometimes we hit a wall and we have to start the process all over again. Just the synthesis aspect alone, as I mentioned earlier, can require anywhere from weeks to months of R&D, which is why early communication, collaboration, and confirmation of a new NPS is so critical. So Cayman Chemical is headquartered in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and we were founded in 1980 by Dr. Kirk Maxey. We have built up quite a diverse catalog of research tools over the decades, over, we have over 20,000 products now, and we also do GMP, active pharmaceutical ingredient manufacturing, as well as contract services. The forensic chemistry division is relatively new in the Cayman chemical history and is still just a small part of what Cayman does overall. And we oversee the production of 3000 standards. Our division maintains two ISO accreditations, 17025 and 17034. And if you click on the forensic uh, science products section on the lower right hand side of the caymanchem.com landing page, you will be taken to our forensic site where you can search for just the forensic items and tools of interest. Clicking on the forensic science products page takes you here uh, to this screen and this is where you can easily search for drug standards, metabolites, mixtures, and screening panels by Clicking on the Learn More button on the Product Search and Drug Identification Tool section, you can sort by compound class or regulatory status. You can view new products that we introduce, which is a great way to keep abreast of the latest designer drugs out there. You can also find our GC Mass Spec Search tool here. By clicking on the Learn More button in the Resources and Literature section, the, the third gray uh, section over, you can download our latest uh, mass spectral library update. You can view our uh, lab guides and so on. So I mentioned our uh, GC mass spec library, and this is updated periodically. Uh, you can download it straight to your GC mass spec instrument, and we now have over 2,000 entries. I also mentioned a GC mass spec search tool earlier. This is a very useful tool that we offer free on our website. And if you're not using it, please check it out. When, de uh, when trying to determine what could be the structure of a new NPS substance you have on your hand, this is the tool that you wanna use. This can be found if you click on the product search and, and drug identification tools link. Once there, you will see uh, a link for GC mass spec drug identification tool. So click on that. And that will now allow you to enter a, uh, for example, a base peak. Um, if you type in base peak 241, for example, quickly 11 hits will emerge as compounds that share that same base peak that are in our database. If you immediately, you can then immediately view the GC mass spec of those hits by clicking on the blue hyperlink as you scroll down that list of hits. And this can be very useful to determining what your new substance might be or what it might be related to. I know I went through this fast and there's a lot of information on these slides, but hopefully you will, you will take some time to go back and play around with this tool and hopefully you find it very useful. If after searching that tool, you cannot find a mass spec match, we are here to help. Over the years, our forensic chemistry division scientists and I have collaborated with dozens and dozens of forensic labs around the world to assist in structural elucidation. Here are some screenshots of some EI mass specs sent to us in the summer of 2021 that were all of the same unknown novel structure, something being trafficked online as 5C MDA-19. The very recent discovery of that substance and this new oxazid structural class of synthetic cannabinoids is a perfect example of, of the role that we play in improving your workflow. Not only were we uh, very involved early on with the elucidation of these structures, such as the item depicted here, but we were also at the forefront of the discussions and decisions on a naming scheme. 
So after we came up with a potential structure for the substance depicted on the um, previous slide, uh, the synthesis of that standard uh, was carried out so that a confirmation could be made. And in, this, in the case of this new class of synthetic cannabinoids that we had discovered over the summer, fortunately there was scientific literature out there that, de that described the synthesis of that structure. So we were able to make uh, the confirmation fairly quickly. After we put the pieces together to figure out what each of those new substances were, we collaborated with the team at the CFSRE's NPS Discovery. They were also very engaged in the pursuit of identifying and alerting the forensic community to new NPS. So we co-authored this August 2021 notice that explained what these new compounds were, and we explained the naming system that we used for this new class, which we coined the oxazids. This work uh, laid the framework for naming additional substances in this class that would come after that notification went out, such as BZO chemoxazid and BZO4 EN poxazid. I just glossed over months and months and months of work, but hopefully I was able to illustrate the beneficial role that we play in the for in forensic community. The ability to recognize the need for a standard as early as possible in the NPS lifecycle allows reference material manufacturers more time to get working on the synthesis of those standards, which in turn enables forensic labs to make confirmation more, more quickly. So it's an important relationship. Just briefly here on the topic of naming, we have also worked on establishing and explaining naming systems for other classes of compounds many times in the past. And this is in an effort to be a true and valuable resource. And we are always seeking ways to share knowledge. For example, we laid out the naming conventions for several classes of synthetic opioids, such as the fentanyls and the cinnamyl piperazines. There is no time to go into all of these, but I have provided the links here um, to guide you in the future, and uh, we have received a lot, a lot of positive feedback for our contribution in this area. Here are some images of our uh, free uh, synthetic cannabinoid and cathinone lab, lab guides, which cover mass spec fragments, as well as tips for naming compounds. For example, the synthetic cannabinoid poster covers all the uh, codes for the head, core, and tail groups. We also have lab guides that assist with identification, naming, and metabolism for fentanyls, for utopioids, uh, not pictured here. We have a poster dedicated um, entirely to synthetic cannabinoid metabolism, as well as a poster dedicated to benzodiazepine metabolism. At the beginning of this presentation, I listed the expectations of a reference standard manufacturer, and while actively participating in academic research was not listed, that is something that our scientists are actively engaged in. Whether it's application notes or journal articles, our scientists are always seeking ways to contribute to the greater scientific community. A few, are, a few of our recent contributions are highlighted here, such as an application note sharing an HPLC method to separate delta-9 THC degradants, a few in vitro pharmacology study publications, and a very recent in vivo fentanyl analog respiratory depression study. Before I close out, I need to thank the incredible forensic team that works so diligently to ensure that we meet all of your expectations and serve as that true extension of your laboratory. I hope that you were able to catch yesterday's presentations by our scientists Rob Shulkin and Danielle St. Germain, who were able to discuss the latest trends in synthetic cannabinoids and arylcyclohexylamines. This picture is the crew under my supervision that works on the synthesis and the isoquality aspects of the work. But Cayman has entire departments not pictured here that support all of Cayman Chemical, and I appreciate their um, support as well. They um, work in the areas of technical support, customer service, safety and regulatory, inventory control, shipping, technical information, and technical writing. We are happy to serve this forensic community and have always appreciated the support that we receive back from this tight-knit community that we know is built on trust, and we appreciate that trust. Thanks again for listening in. Um, to learn more about the, the newest standards that we introduce um, or the latest resources that we have made available, please sign up to be on our email distribution list or follow us on social media. If you need assistance, please reach out to me or our technical support team, and hopefully we can answer your question or point you in the right direction. Thanks again for watching this presentation and have a great day.